Welcome back. In this video, I wanted to go over auto scaling groups. Auto scaling groups are a collection of EC2 instances that are treated as a group of instances that can scale up or scale down based on demand. Now, we have already talked about how Elastic AWS is, meaning we can launch and delete instances whenever we need to. Auto scaling groups build on this idea by adding instances when the workload demands it, otherwise referred to as scaling out, or by removing instances when the workload no longer requires these instances, otherwise referred to as scaling in. This helps ensure we have the optimal amount of instances for our workload at all times. By configuring the auto scaling groups with a minimum of instances we can run our workload with, and with a maximum we project our workload will require. This in turn will save us money because we will always be running with the necessary number of instances. When these new instances get deployed, we can also ensure they will get registered or deregistered with the load balancer automatically. For example, let's say that one of our EC2 instances becomes unhealthy and it starts failing. The auto scaling group can detect the issue with the server, replace the instance with a healthy instance, deregister the unhealthy instance, and then proceed to registering the new instance with the load balancer. And this whole process can happen automatically. Now, auto scaling groups provide elasticity and scalability to our cloud infrastructure. The way they do this is by allowing us to configure the minimum capacity, the desired capacity, and the maximum capacity. They also allow us the ability to use CloudWatch to scale up or scale down based on the metrics that CloudWatch is collecting. They can allow our infrastructure to scale based on a predetermined time. For example, if we are running an application for our business in AWS, and we know that our servers will get overloaded as soon as people make it into the office around 8 a.m., we can set our auto scaling group to scale up at 7.30 a.m. and then scale down as people leave the office after 5.30 p.m., so that we aren't paying for unnecessary instances and meeting the workload demand. And all of this works with a load balancer that acts as a single point of contact for our application, meaning we can set the domain name address on our load balancer and have the load balancer distribute the traffic to our instances evenly. Now, we can also configure what AWS calls scaling policies which define how our auto scaling groups will behave. These are simply rules, and these rules define how our auto scaling groups will add or remove instances from the groups. We'll start off with the easiest, which is manual scaling, which is not really a policy, but we simply define the desired capacity manually. We can manually define the capacity at any time and the auto scaling group will automatically handle the launching or termination of the instances. There's also simple scaling, which is simple in nature because we define a rule based on a metric. For example, if our CPU utilization hits above 75%, then we can adjust the desired capacity by adding 1. With the same token, if our CPU utilization hits below 30%, then we can adjust the desired capacity by subtracting one. The key of understanding simple scaling is that they take an action based on a metric. Next, we have step scaling, which is similar to simple scaling, but lets us define the rules in more detail based on the alarm that is breached. For example, if our CPU utilization hits above 70%, then we add one instance. And if it hits above 80%, then we add two more instances. And the same in reverse, when we need to scale down. Step scaling allows us to react in a more extreme way, depending on the alarm that is breached. Next, we have target tracking which lets us define a target value. For example, let's say we define the policy to state that we want the auto scaling group 
to keep the CPU utilization at 70%. Then the auto scaling group will add or remove instances to keep us around that 70% mark. Keep in mind that this is an aggregate value across the group, meaning this is across all the instances in the group. And finally, we have scheduled scaling, which we mentioned in the last slide, scales the instances in the group based on a time. So the policy is based on schedules that we define to work around either business hours or for scheduled sale periods like Black Friday or any other holiday that we know will require more instances to maintain our workload. This is the best type of policy when we know the workload in advance. I hope in this video you learned more about auto scaling groups and the types of scaling policies that we can use. I'll see you in the next video.